What's going on everyone? Today I'll be going through five sides that will bolt and five sides that will slide in 2023. Ahead of the AFL season, I'm gonna get my ladder predictions out tomorrow. So it'll in a way be an early preview for my ladder predictions, but at the same time, not really. It won't be exactly an indication of where I'll have each side. It's sort of instead just a little bit of a preview of you know the sides that I think will actually take the next step and the sides that in my opinion are more expected to, to fall ahead of 2023. So We'll start with the five bolters, the sides that I think will rise ahead of 2023. And the first side, I think it really comes to no surprise, I've got Carlton. Now, of course, we all know that the Blues, they were in the eight for 22 rounds besides the last in round 23. And obviously, they should have made finals. I think we haven't seen anything happen like that since, oh, I can't remember exactly when, like the 60s or the 70s. So it's certainly a letdown, a disappointment. But I still think for the Blues, though, they got one of the more threatening lists in the competition. They've got two reigning common medalists in Kerno and Mackay. They've got a reigning Brownlin Lillis and Paddy Cripps. And then they've also got the likes of Walsh, Saad, Dockney, and Weedering. All could have all Australian years. You never know in 2023. And anything short of finals, in my opinion, this year for the Blues is just a complete failure. They should have made it last year. Blues fans already booked their finals tickets in bloody round 20. And, uh, you know, obviously last year they were still able to take it up to the best sides. I remember that game against the Swans. I think that was just unreal their second quarter or whatever. They, their best footy, in my opinion, the Blues up there with the best in the competition. Best matching a top four side. But there also is that little bit of doubt. It is the Blues. You can't forget they're a side who have made the eight in 10 years and regularly do underachieve. But I think it's now or never for the Blues. The next side in which I do expect to go up this year is the Gold Coast Suds. I'm really bullish on the Suns. Uh, you know, the Suns, they arguably had their best season last year. They had their best season in terms of percentage and win-loss ratio. And I do feel like this year can be the year that the Suns can take the next step and make finals for their first time in their history. That'd be amazing if they could. Of course, though, the Suns aren't the only side improving in the competition. There'll be other teams around them. So it won't be as easy to make finals as I would probably say in other years. But in my opinion, I think that the Suns, they can improve on the consistency, which they do always tend to fade away late in the season, particularly before last year. You know, they they were just terrible in that regard. But, you know, if they can further improve their developing list, I think they can make the finals. They're going to have Ben King, fresh from ACL, will help complement Mabai Chol and superstar caliber players in, such as Took Miller, No Anderson in the midfield. I really can't see the Suns winning less games than what they won in 2022. And I do expect them to be a dangerous side in 2023. Do I see them making finals? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see for tomorrow's ladder prediction video. Now, the next team that I believe will bolt up the ladder or should at least bolt up the ladder with their upwards trajectory, that is the Adelaide Crows. I think they're still the second youngest list in the comp. Again, I might be wrong, but it wouldn't shock me considering that they do still have a lot of youngsters in their list. I still think despite that the Crows are arguably one of the most well-drilled and disciplined sides in the competition, as the years go by, the Crows youngsters, they're only obviously going to get better, as so will their skill and poise, which was shown in a few dominating wins in 2022, that game against Port Adelaide, where they just sort of grinded to get that win. Carlton, I, I reckon the Carlton game was their best win of the season. Of course, they also beat the Dogs in Ballarat. On top of that, they've shown how difficult it is to play against in order to grind out a win, especially if you play Adelaide at their home ground. It's not easy anymore. Like, you've got to grind out a full four quarters to actually get the job done. On top of that, though, the excitement of the likes of Rankin coming into the side, as well as the likes of Himmelberg, Rochelle, and obviously Taylor Walker still has a couple years left in them up forward could make them a two goal better team and I think scoring was probably what let them down a little bit they're not the best side in terms of scoring and they can improve on that regard as well as you know their squad developing and all that I've got seen jumping a few ladder positions compared to last year and finals isn't out of the equation for the Crows if all things go their way now another side that I think will rise up the ladder another side from South Australia fairly obvious selection with the five I've got the power and obviously after an 11 plates finished they severely underachieved in 2022. They finished top two the previous two seasons to finishing 11th. But then again, you could make the argument that 2022 was just a blimp in the radar, a flash in the pan and a bit of an anomaly. And that, you know, 0-5 start obviously derailed their season. They were forced to play catch-up footy after that. And it's it's really difficult. People don't realize how difficult it is. Of course, with the power, we all know they are capable of doing damage at their best. And with one of the more promising young midfields in the competition and a forward line that, in my opinion, seems to go unnoticed and is quite underrated, they should jump up a few spots this year and really should be making finals as their minimum goal, particularly with the new additions into their squad in Horn, Francis and Rioli. And after finishing bottom for two years in a row, I've got North Melbourne as my last bolt aside for the video. Of course, they're still going to be one of the least threatening teams in the competition. We all saw how bad they were. In, like, they were 
They weren't just bad, they were god-awful. But think about it, the Roos can't really do any worse this year, even if they tried, and you wouldn't think they would get worse with the addition, of course, of Alistair Clarkson. It'll be really exciting, especially for North fans, to see what, you know, mastermind tactics and what he can provide to the young list. And they've got a young developing list that should only get better, really, and, and you can make the argument that David Noble just had no idea what he was doing. That is sort of why, in a way, that they were really that bad in 2022. They've finally got a good coach, a coach that actually knows what they're doing, can take him to the promised land. I reckon North, they should. They should at least win a few more games and they could possibly get out of that bottom four range. You never know. Now let's head to some sliders, teams that I think could slide down the ladder this year. Not necessarily saying that will happen or I'll predict it to happen, but could certainly happen. The first side that I have are the Western Bulldogs and I believe the Bulldogs definitely could drop off in 2023, especially after last year's extremely unconvincing season, which only saw them making the eight as a result of the Blues choking. I think it's clear to say that everyone would agree that the Blues deserve to make finals over the Dogs in that year. I think it's going to be a little bit difficult for the Dogs to see where the improvement's going to come, as last year they just were never really convincing at any stage of the season and only really seemed to perform well like promising against the sides below them, with the exception of that game against the Ds, and I think that game against the Swans early in the season. But yeah, some of the performances, in my opinion, for the Dogs were a little bit concerning, particularly late into the season, where they feel like they just, I don't know, when things don't go their way, they drop their heads, that game against the Swans, Cats, Lock, Lions, and then the Dockers, the final, they were in that 41 to 1 position. And then when the Dockers, you know, in that game started to get on top and they started to, you know, get the game onto their terms, it's almost as if the dogs just sort of gave in and, and almost in a way gave up. The dogs, they're capable of leaking goals really quickly. The defense is still, in my opinion, a bit of a concern. And you've got the likes of Dunkley and Hunter losing them will obviously deplete and hurt them. However, you could make the argument that they still have a really stacked midfield. It might not hurt them as much as people make it out to be. You know, they obviously were pretty poor last year for the most part, the dogs midfield. If they can return back to their 2021 form, then yeah, they shouldn't really have any reason not to strive for the top eight and probably could. We head to the next team that I have in the sliders category and I have the Hawks. Let's be real, everyone's going to have the Hawks expected to drop this year. And, you know, the main reason, plain and simply, is due to their extreme loss of experience. Over a thousand games experience last year got rid of Mitchell, O'Meara, um, Gunston, Shields, I think even another player, McAvoy, yeah, there you go. Well, I mean, five players like that, they're going to hurt. I do like the long-term direction, though, of the club or where the club is heading under Sam Mitchell. Obviously, the long-term plan is to completely rebuild their list from the ground upwards. But obviously, at the moment, the Hawks, they're well and truly into their rebuild. It's going to obviously take a while before you see the Hawks rise and become contenders again. But knowing the Hawks culture and all that, I do think that it will end up happening and they will, you know, almost push for a flag in maybe five years' time. However, after the Hawks finishing 13th last year, I'm expecting them to slide into the bottom four at the very least. I mean, they could easily finish wooden spoon, to be honest with you. As quite simply, in my opinion, they just won't be able to compete with the better sides. And in the coming years, it'll all be about developing their youth, such as the likes of Newcomb, Moore, and Lewis. The next team I have that could slide down the ladder, not necessarily saying it will happen, nor will I predict it to happen, but I've got the team that I support in the Saints. And yeah, there are many reasons why I can see the Saints possibly sliding in 2023. Obviously, a after a disastrous and almost capitulating finish to the 2022 season, it doesn't really give me a lot of promise and hope, particularly when at times the Saints, they almost looked as bad as a bottom four side. In fact, there was actually a time where I genuinely thought the Saints were the worst team in the comp, you know, with their dreadful four line structure and inability to score late into the season last year. And again, this year, just like in years previously, the Saints, they've been hit hard again with injury in the preseason. They now haven't got King. Hayes and Billings and memory at the moment. So it's obviously going to be difficult in 2023. Where will the Saints find their goals from? You know, players such as Higgins, Butler, Sharman, they're going to have to step up. They need big years. They were a little bit poor in 2022. And the fact that the Saints also had no involvement in the trade period made it seem like they didn't really care. Or maybe the, the fact that the Saints thought their list was good enough, which I still don't think it is. As well as a pretty disappointing hit out against the Ds in the match sim. All these factors could see the Saints be a side labelled to possibly fall and slide into the bottom six. The Swans are now the next side I see possibly sliding down the ladder. They obviously finished third last year and made a granny. But the real test, I think it goes without saying for the Swans, is whether they'll be able to mentally overcome their heavy defeat that they suffered in last year's grand final. And I know everyone's been talking about it, but it's because it happens so bloody often. We all know it practically happens every time. When a side that loses a granny by a lot, the year after, they don't even make the eight. And of course, 
The Swans are certainly capable of bucking the trend, and I think that they certainly could, again, finish up in the top four. But not only that, you've also got the likes of a much more difficult fixture, and the fact that a lot of clubs around the Swans seem to be improving pretty rapidly could perhaps see the Swans falling as a result. But run like all of the other clubs that I've mentioned that are expected to fall, of course, the Swans are a team that really should be striving for the fall and you wouldn't expect to fall out of the top eight. Now, the final team that I have in 2023 that will slide will be the Crosstown rival side in the Giants. It really doesn't come to much surprise at all, to be honest. With an extremely forgettable 2022 outing, they finished, I think, 16th with six wins. Of course, when you immediately take a look at who have they lost in the offseason, you got Hopper, Taranto, Hill, and Bruin. You get quite concerned, I guess, for the Giants' future and where they're going to be heading, particularly when all those players are in the Giants' best 22. To me, the Giants are looking to rebuild. I don't really see it any other way. You know, the players, they're looking to leave. And the Giants, they're looking to, you know, bring in players through the draft. I honestly doubt they'll record more than four wins this year. I'm being genuine, and I think they're almost a lock for the bottom two, the Giants. Anyways, guys, those were my sides that I think could slide or bolt. As previously mentioned, I'm not necessarily saying that I think all of the sides that I mentioned in the bolters and sliders section will bolt and slide respectively, but I've gone through, you know, reasons into why a lot of people expect them to rise up the ladder and also fall. My ladder predictions will be out tomorrow, and I'll also be streaming a couple of the preseason games on the Thursday night. So the content, you know, it's March now as we, you know, head into the footy season. It's obviously going to be coming at a more frequent, consistent rate. So I appreciate everyone for watching the video. Leave your thoughts down below. What sides do you reckon will bolt and slide? And we'll see you soon in my next one.